Hi everyone, in this video, what we're going to do is to answer some problems in differentiability and chain rule. So I hope you already watched the lecture video for this topic before you proceed with this video. For the first example, we want to determine if the given function f is differentiable at x equal to 3. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Again, in answering, uh, in solving differentiability, first it is wise to check if the given function is continuous at the given point. So we want to recall that if f is not continuous, it implies right away that f is not differentiable. All right, so we want to check first. Uh, we check. if f is continuous at the given point, which is equal to, to 3. Okay, so how do we check continuity? Again, to check continuity first is to solve for its function value. So we are solving f of 3. Okay, so where is f defined at x equal to 3? So as you notice, it's here. So we will use this uh, function. So f of 3 is simply equal to 3 squared minus 4, and that is equal to 9 minus 4, which is equal to, to 5. Okay. For the second part, in checking uh, the continuity of a function, we take a look at the limits of f. Uh, as x approaches 3 from the left and from the right. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, limit of f as x approaches 3. Let's start from the left. Okay, so we have to check if which of these two function uh, shall we substitute to f as x approaches 3 from the left. So 3 from the left, that means that x is less than 3. So we will use this function, okay? So that is the limit of x squared minus 4 as x approaches 3 from the left. And since x squared minus 4 is a polynomial, so we can just simply substitute 3. So you have 3 squared minus 4. This is, this is equal to, to 5, okay? Then we now check for the limit of f as x approaches 3 from the right. So this is equal to the limit of, so let's check which function we will be using. So uh, x approaches 3 from the right means that uh, x should be greater than 3. So we will be using this second function. So that is the limit of square root of uh, x minus 2 as x approaches 3 from the right, okay? This is equal to a square root of 3 minus 2, which is equal to square root of 1, which is equal to 1, okay? So what can we conclude here? We have to uh, note that the limit of f as x approaches 3 from the left is not equal to the limit of f as x approaches 3 from the right. This implies that f is not continuous at x equal to, to 3. Since f is not continuous at x equal to 3, it implies also that f is not differentiable at x equals 3. Okay. So that is for the first example. Okay, so we're done with the first one. Now we proceed with this next example. For this example, we want to determine if the given function f is differentiable at x equal to 1. So similar in the first example, the first thing that we have to do here is to check for the continuity of f at x equal to 1. Okay. So we have to check 
for the continuity. of f at x equal to, to 1. So, again, we'll just do it fast. So, first is to check f of 1. So, f is defined here when x is equal to 1. Therefore, f of 1 is just 3 times 1 raised to 1 third minus 1, and this is simply equal to 3 minus 1, and that is equal to 2. For the next one, we look, uh, we take a look at the limits of, or the one side limits of f. So check for the limit of f as x approaches 1 from the right. So if, uh, if we want that, we want x to be uh, greater than 1. So we'll use the second function. So that is simply equal to the limit of x cubed minus 2x plus 3 as x approaches 1 from the right. And this is equal to 1 minus 2 plus 3. And yes, this is equal to 2. Lastly, uh, we take a look at the limit of f as x approaches 1 from the left. So that is equal to the limit of which function uh, are we going to use. So we'll use this function because we want uh, x to approach 1 from the left. So we have, that is limit of 3 x raised to 1 third minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the left. And this is simply equal to 3 times 1 minus 1, which is equal to, to 2. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the limit of f as x approaches 1 from the left and from the right are equal. So we can conclude that the limit of f as x approaches 1 is indeed equal to 2. And for the last one, uh, we simply need to check if f of 1 is equal to limit of f as x approaches 1, and that is actually the case. So since f of uh, 1 is equal to the limit of f as x approaches 1, this implies that f is continuous at x equal to, to 1. Okay. So since we already proved that f is continuous at x equal to 1, uh, we can now proceed to its differentiability. Again, uh, being continuous does not mean that a, a function is also differentiable at a particular point. So we have to check for also for the differentiability. Okay. So to check for the differentiability, we now compute for f prime of x. So... What is f prime of x? So for the first function, it's a derivative of 3x raised to 1 third minus 1. So the derivative of that is simply 3 times 1 third x raised to 1 third minus 1 minus the derivative of a constant, which is actually 0. So that is when x is less than 1. As you can see, we remove We remove the equal sign here because we are not yet sure if the function is differentiable, okay, at x equal to 1. For the next one, we have f prime of x. Uh, we want to get the derivative of x cubed minus 2x plus 3, but that is just a polynomial. Hence, we have 3x squared minus 2, and that is when x is greater than 1. Okay, so to, to determine if f is differentiable at x equal to 1, we want to compute for the left and right derivatives of f. Okay, so let's compute for the right derivative. So we have uh, f prime of 1 from the right, so that this is just equal to the limit of f prime 
as x approaches 1 from the right, and this is equal to the limit of, okay, so we'll be, we'll be using uh, this one, okay? So that is a limit of 3, x squared minus 2, as x approaches 1 from the right, and this is precisely equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 2, or this is equal to, to 1, okay? So for the next one, we compute for the left derivative, and that is f prime of 1 from the left, and this is equal to the limit of f prime as x approaches 1 from the left. Okay, 1 from the left, so we'll be using this function. Hence, this is equal to the limit of, again, we want x to approach 1 from the left, so we'll be using this. So if you simplify this, 3 will cancel. 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. So this is simply equal to the limit of x raised to negative 2 thirds as x approaches 1 from the left. And this is equal to, to 1. f prime of 1, the right derivative is equal to the left derivative both are equal to 1, so this implies that f is differentiable at x equal to 2, okay? So that's how, okay, so that's how you compute for, or that's how you determine differentiability of a function. Now we proceed with our next topic, which is chain rule. Okay, so for the first example in chain rule, we want to get the derivative of square root of quantity 9 minus x squared. So how do we compute for the derivative of 9 minus x squared? Okay. To get the derivative of square root of 9 minus x squared, we can observe that this function here is actually a composition of two functions. So let's just call these functions f and g, where f is equal to square root of x, while g is equal to 9 minus x squared, okay? Then we get the derivatives of these functions. What is f prime? So derivative of square root of x is just 1 over 2 square root of x, while the derivative of 9 minus x squared is negative 2x, okay? So let's recall how do we get the derivative of a composition of function. So this is just equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x, ito yung chain rule, okay? So this is equal now to f prime of g of x. This is f prime, and this is g of x. So you get the composition. We simply substitute this g to, to x, okay? So that means we have 1 over 2 square root of 9 minus x squared times g prime, and we are given that this is g prime, so that is times negative 2x. Therefore, this is now the derivative of, the derivative of square root of 9 minus x squared, okay? Okay, but uh, not always nagagawin natin to because it will make our solutions really uh, long if we will use this. So as much as possible, ang gagawin lang natin is to uh, get the derivative of this without expanding it this way. So paano natin yung gagawin? So, pwede natin isipin, for example, you have a composition, a function, f circle g. There is an outer function and an inner function. So, how does that work? So, what you're going to do is to simply first get the derivative of the outer function. 
And then, after doing that, you go in the next inner function. Okay? So, to illustrate that, let's have this second example. So, suppose we want to find f prime given that f of x is equal to secant to the 4 of 5 cosine x over tangent 2x. Okay? So, let's see. Paano nag-work yung minention ko kanina? For example, in this f, you have to think of the outermost function. Okay? What is the outermost function of this f? Okay? So is it secant? Is it this quotient? Or is this this? Or is that the power? Okay? So please take note that the outermost function here is the power. Okay? So first we get the derivative of something that is raised to 4. So how do you get the derivative of that? So that is simply 4 times this raised to 3. Okay? So simply copy secant of 5 cosine x over tangent 2x and raise this to, to 3. Okay? So we're done getting the derivative of this power. So ang sinasabi ng chain rule, kailangan uubusin natin lahat ng function. So aside from getting the derivative of this, we go that to the next function, which is secant, and get the derivative of that. Okay, what is the derivative of secant? Derivative of secant is secant of 5 cosine x over tangent 2x times tangent of the quantity 5 cosine x over tangent 2x. Okay, so again, this is the derivative of secant. Okay? Next. So we're done with this power. Then we went inside and get, uh, and get the derivative of secant. Now the next one is we go to the innermost function, which is this one, and get the derivative of that. So here we multiply the derivative of 5 cosine x over tangent 2x. But this is a quotient, okay? So what we're going to do is to apply the quotient rule to get the derivative of 5 cosine x over tangent 2x, okay? So what is the quotient rule? So that is low derivative of the denominator. So low derivative times the derivative of the numerator. What is the derivative of... 5 cosine x, derivative of that is negative 5 sine x minus, okay, minus the derivative of the denominator, then copy the numerator. So that is 5 cosine x times, what is the derivative of tangent? That is secant squared 2x. Okay, but we're not yet done. Why? If you notice, we have tangent 2x. And meron pa ulit function na mas maliit or may mas inner function pa from the tangent. And that is 2x. So sinasabi ng chain rule is that we also get the derivative of 2x. Okay, so times the derivative of 2x which is equal to, to 2. Okay, all over denominator squared. So that is tangent squared of 2x. Okay, so that's how you get the derivative of this function f. Okay. Okay, for the last one, we have this. We want to find the dy over dx given that y is equal to cosine raised to 3 of cotangent 
of cosecant of square root of, of x. Okay? So let's see. Kung paano natin to iso solve. Okay. So similar, in the previous example, uh, ang gagawin lang natin is to, uh, ob, uh, it, what we're going to do here is to simply identify the outermost function up to the innermost function. Okay? So first, sige, observe muna natin. So we have here raised to 3. So this is the outermost. Then we have cosine. Then if you go inside, we have cotangent. And then if you go inside, we have cosecant. And if we go inside, we have square root of x. So in that order, okay? So let's see. What is dy over dx? So dy over dx is simply equal to, okay, get the derivative of a power 3. So that means we have 3 cosine raised to 3 minus 1. So that is squared. Then copy everything. Cotangent, cosecant of square root of x. Okay, so this is the first one. Times, we get the derivative of cosine. What is the derivative of cosine? Okay, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have negative sine of cotangent cosecant square root of x. Okay. So we're done with this two. Let's go now to the next function, which is cotangent. But what is the derivative of cotangent? So this is times the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, then copy everything. Cosecant of cosecant squared of x. Okay. So we're done with the cotangent. So let's go now to cosecant. What is the derivative of cosecant? Yes, the derivative of cosecant is negative. Cosecant of square root of x, cotangent of square root of x. Okay, times, okay. So we're done with this, with this, with this. With this. So lastly, we get the derivative of square root of x. But what is the derivative of square root of x? That is simply 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay? So that is now dy over dx. Okay, so that's the, the last example. I hope you learned something. And good luck.